When the routing guide fails and you need extra capacity, it helps to have a strategic partner. That's where Surge Transportation's real-time pricing and capacity come in. Built on our proprietary logic and market data, the real-time pricing tool provides instant market pricing, backed by a 100% tender accept guarantee. With instant rates, simple integration, and guaranteed acceptance, we take the unpredictability out of sourcing extra truckload capacity. Are you ready to truck it? I am Mike Vincent. I am joined by Ryan Pamplin, my good friend from Tame and Transport. Dooners lost. Hey, little cowbell for our uh, lost compadre Dooner. He's out in the desert southwest somewhere in uh, New Mexico. Way out there. He's way out there. He's cruising around with Torque Robotics in their AVs, Look checking that. that stuff out. He'll be back on Friday, but he's out there doing that stuff right there. So, my good friend Ryan Pamplin has stepped in to graciously co-host with me. So buckle up. Thank it's you. gonna be a bumpy ride. Hey, buckle up. I'm gonna try something I saw in a cartoon once. Oh man, I'm That's ready. That's my favorite thing I'm to so say to ready. hitchhikers. <laughs> 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 but we got a great show today. We got Joe Monahan, I'm gonna say it until he corrects me. Uh, president of Worldwide Logistics is gonna be on talking about the current state of the world supply chains and what we can expect through the end of 22 and into Q1 2023. Jeff D'Angelo, good Uh-oh. friend also of both of ours, right? Oh man, go right way back. on. He's Definitely, got a man. new foray into uh, digital uh, transportation here and brokerage. I can't wait. I so can't we're going to talk to him. Yeah. And later on, we've got uh, Rooster and Super Trucker joining us later to try and make sense of all this stuff. But uh, first, hey, welcome, my brother. How you been doing? I'm so good. Thank you for welcoming me. I appreciate it. I love being <laughs> here. This is so exciting. And I, uh, I miss doing it. I hope I don't fail, but uh, I hope I make you proud too, my man. <laughs> <laughs> fail! <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, hey, last night, you know, the, the uh, committee came out and big changes in the top no there was no changes no in changes. the top no changes, no changes whatsoever college football we're talking about here and you're a you're a, an alum of ut Proud knoxville which ut knoxville doesn't like to be called ut knoxville because that then says the that UT? utc is actually right matters <laughs> is that right they matter they matter it's all one big family but you know uh, we, everyone knows where to go for saturday right so what do you what do you think to, uh, you guys on the outside looking at what do you what do you think who, you, who do you like you like georgia you sec pulling for sec or you like uh, ohio state or that team from up north or tc you going to do it? What do you think? Hey, man, uh, uh, JT, that defensive end, JT, Tumaloa, incredible. Uh, obviously, Ohio State, Buckeye. Uh, with, with Ohio State. Yeah. Uh, obviously love the SEC. Uh, would love uh, to get a uh, second chance at Georgia. Uh, I hate to say it, but I just love Alabama not being there. I'm sorry. Oh, sweet. No, I think half the, I think everybody outside of Tuscaloosa is with you. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think they're Absolutely. 100% with you. I'll tell you what. I, after this weekend, I saw Georgia. I don't think Georgia's all that, my friend. I think they're, they're great. They're a great team, 100%. but they are definitely beatable. Um, and I, I think TCU is good, but you know, not a, that impressive to me over Texas and Oregon lost. Game. Oregon's out. Right, right, and right. And that was a big game from TCU going down in, in, into Austin. Yeah, it was a uh, big game day, a lot it of was. pressure, all the eyes on you. They, they, they got the dub. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. And either the, or the team from up North are going to lose. So I, I, <laughs> I, I'm pick, I think Vols make it back in there. I think they win it all. I, I think they're I love that. I, I think they're the real deal, man. Hey, they're I'm all awesome. about that. I, I, I bet on, on UC always, uh, thick and thin. I, I was wearing orange and the worst of it. Uh, and I'm, 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 you know, going to be a man of my word and I'm going to put my money in where my mouth is. Look at if, that. If, Look at that picture. Think, you. What is, uh, what is this? <laughs> if I you think look, we're going to win. What is this picture uh, all about here? What is this? <laughs> so I, I got a little ahead of myself, uh, was very confident. Uh, yeah. also I'm in an office, uh, in, jo- in Chattanooga, pretty close to Georgia. We've yeah. got a lot of Georgia fans put yeah. a, put uh, a couple of dollars up, uh, also get, uh, put a bet that I would, uh, with our uh, guy on the left there, uh, yeah. Eston Powell. Yeah. Winner. Gets to buy a uh, color T-shirt for or, or a college T-shirt of of, uh, of their teams for the other one. So I lost. I oh, had to wear gotcha. a, uh, a Georgia shirt for a big uh, Friday meeting we always do. Yeah. What he didn't say was what else I could wear on top of that or in addition to that. 
Gotcha. So I just made sure everyone knew my little. So you're that uh, guy. I am that guy. You're I was a man guy. of my word, but so you're uh, that guy. You make a life. great dad because that's what dads do, right? <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm not, not right now, but I'm okay with. That. Yeah, I understand. No, that's my awesome. dogs love that. I'm, I'm a good dad dog, I think. Awesome. Hey, let's tip the band and uh, then let's uh, get on with the show, right? Surge Transportation now offers digital autonomous load booking for our carrier partners. Visit loads.surgetransportation.com twenty four seven to book loads at competitive market rates with the click of a button. Also, book it now through leading industry load boards. Let's do some headlines. Let's do it. I like this power. I like this power. You think they'll do it again if I say that again? I like that. Let's, Let's do, do some time. headlines. <gasps> <laughs> if we got time later, I'll let you try that. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I am, I'm, I'm sick with power. All right, when will the spot market bottom out, my friend, is the question soon, this survey says. So uh, FreightWaves Research, Joe Antishock writes, more than 70% of carriers and brokers anticipate a floor for spot rates uh, in, uh, in uh, 2023, right? It, yeah. it, it's crazy. At least the most widely shared opinion of nearly 400 carriers and brokers 3PLs that FreightWaves Research surveyed last week asked when spot rates would hit rock bottom in the current cycle. 44.05% answered Q1 2023. And an additional 2557 said Q2 23, uh, 2023. And just 13.242% thought the trough would go later into Q3. You can see it right there. The vast majority there going into just Q1 2023. Yeah. Crazy, man. Yeah. What you do know, you think about that? Uh, and I'd say uh, what what, uh, what what a lot of brokers are seeing. Um, some brokers may may see a little bit yeah. of, of different for their specific book of business, but uh, spot rates have already hit their lowest point from a lot of their perspectives. Sixteen point nine percent of respondents, almost yeah. one in six. Um, and at the end of the day, um, two point five eight is where we're currently at based on the uh, National Truckload Index. Yeah, no doubt. Um, a lot of uh, people are an- an anticipating uh, that going down even closer to two two and uh, uh, fifty four um, by uh, by December. So uh, definitely, um, as at a brokerage, we're we're feeling it. We, we've yeah. got some customers that are are, are definitely uh, wanting to see what we uh, you know so, how, how about we can help from last year. So, when so real was quick, high. how does how where do brokers make money when it, when spot rates are low or when they're high? <laughs> or neither. <laughs> uh, there's there there should be a, a good healthy mix of both. I mean, that, both we, right. We, we you get squeezed either way, right? Don't absolutely, you? Absolutely. Yeah, that's what people think when it's low. You guys are making all the money, right? <laughs> absolutely. And when right? it's high, you guys are making all the money, right? <laughs> we should be honoring our commitments and taking care of our yeah, carriers. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. You know what's interesting about this is those sixteen point uh, uh, nine. Yeah, sixteen point nine six percent that said that it would already hit rock bottom. That was uh, we two weeks ago. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> that they, that they the said that. Not like so now, right? So they were already wrong. <laughs> they were already wrong. It, 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 it is still going on. But it's interesting. So uh, the other one was, uh, where do you think spot rates will be at the beginning, this next chart here? And if you go to there and check this out on FreightWaves.com, this is an interactive, actually, chart. You can change it to that Q4 and see what they say in Q2 2024. Yes, there's some people who are thinking it's not going to rebound into Q2 2024, which is, uh, man, I hope those pessimists are completely wrong. But you can see the breakdown here of how many people. And even in Q2 2023, Way better than half think it's going to be the same or at least 1% to 9% lower than they are right now, which is crazy. Yeah, and you're hearing that. A lot of our uh, truck community is concerned. Uh, fuel is going the opposite direction. Uh, we'll talk about how that impacts the, the contract market, but the spot market is obviously um, such a big impact on on the small and mid-sized carriers um, that pe- people are worried, and uh, we're definitely hoping that the holiday season uh, is, is good to everybody. Yeah. Um, but beginning right. of next year, it's, it's, it's going to be a telltale sign for what 2023 yeah, is looking yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look for those good loads. Don't take the little ones. Don't be the guy dropping the dropping the freight because, you know, it's always the most desperate. We used to call them the stupidest, but the most desperate in a room sets the rate on the spot market, and that's mm. – uh, uh, keep it high for these guys, man, at least through the first of the year, man. People yeah. remember that. It's, yeah. it's all, all people business, no yeah. matter what the tech does here. Yeah. So speaking of contract, let's talk about a little bit. Cass let's go. says considerably, co- uh, considerable cost relief is now highly probable for 2023. And I need to read this. And then Tom Maiden reports the shipments and cost to turn negative year over year in December is what Cass is saying. Shipments and freight costs were up again in October on a year over year comparison, according to data from Cass Information Systems. However, the the Monday report cautioned that a modest increase in volumes was due to a variety of circumstances that are 
unlikely to reoccur. The shipments component of the CAS freight index increased 2.9%. Now, follow this. 2.9% year over year during the month of October, but fell 1.4%. From October, the change marked the second straight sequential decline since the index hit a more than four-year high in August. And uh, what uh, Tim DeNoyer is saying here is that after a soft first half of 2022, things started to pick up. Supply yep. chains started to uh, de-kink, if you will, yep. and things were moving. People were moving stuff. It was uh, uh, a, a false positive, though, is what he's saying. And uh, they're Probably. looking for uh, these, uh, quote was, these are all temporary to varying degrees and quickly declining import trends suggest that uh, they may end very soon. Assuming normal seasonality holds true the rest of the year, Denoyer believes that volumes will be flat in November and down 5% in December when compared to 2021 levels. Yeah, they went on to say um, they expect expenditures uh, to continue trickle- trickling down. Um, again, around this time of the year, there's always year-over-year increases. Normally, it's around a 52% uh, increase for yeah. October. It was only about um, uh, 44% higher with, with fuel driving that. Uh, it's the smallest increase since November of 2020. Um, and uh, like a lot of uh, what we've been talking about, CAS expects uh, year over year for December to show some negativity. Uh, so everything uh, is, is really kind of uh, on, on December to, to show or, or, or go home. Yeah, absolutely. And Denoria goes on to say with spot rates already down significantly, it's only a matter of time until the index begins to decline on a year over year basis. December is not out of the question for that to happen. What he's talking about is, you know, you, you got the spot rates that spot spot uh, rates that are lower right now, right? Yep. And they're lower than contract. It's only a matter of time before those drag those contract rates down. And now you're starting, we're going into the traditional bid season and stuff. You guys are seeing more bids coming through, I, I would imagine. Absolutely. Uh, I bet you're not bidding the same price as you were last year. No, we've got a lot, <laughs> a lot of salespeople that we have to have conversations with who are new to the industry and let them understand, help them understand the, the long-term impact. Um, and we've got carriers, especially with fuel, uh, they're calling us directly and having really honest conversations about, you know, where the partnership is because fuel is going one direction with spot rates going the other. And that's hurting a lot, a lot yeah, of independence. Absolutely. So let me ask you this real quick, because we're going to start talking some taming right now, right? right? Let's talk a little bit of taming. But first, before we get into some really important stuff like birthdays and that kind of thing, you mentioned new brokers that are coming into the industry. So when you're talking to them, do you talk to them about the bullwhip effect or the, the down the line impact of what you're doing today? you got gouging and trying to make as much margin as you possibly can today, that's going to screw you next year when things get tight, right? You talk Absolutely. about them and try and train that to them, or are you one, of these, one of these brokers just like, just drive, brother, burn, burn, burn. It's so important, the sustainability impact of, of what what kind of you, you teach with your sales organization and, and um, pricing stuff the right way, uh, working on value, working on delivering things more than a rate in a truck. Um, eventually, you're going to lose a lane, you're going to lose a, a shipment. Um you know, compete the right way. Yeah. I, I think, especially here in, in town, a lot of the freight markets have got multiple brokerages sure. where we all know each other. We all uh, should compete in a healthy way. Um, and then we all should always take care of the, the, the shipper and take care of the carrier. Absolutely. And at the end of the day, we should be okay. But it Absolutely. definitely is, is culture driven and just. Uh, Man, keeping it simple. It's a people right thing. Right on. Now, I have to be honest. Hey, thanks for the hat, by the way. The swag is Looks awesome. good. And I love the new the new logo is, is tremendous. I know it's not brand, brand new, but it's pretty brand new. It feels uh, good But you, I have to come clean here. You you weren't my first choice. I really wanted my friend Sheetrock here, but he's celebrating <laughs> his birthday down in Turks and Caicos. We got a picture of Sheetrock here. There he is. There we go, I man. think it's actually Sandrock, isn't it? I love it. I love it. <laughs> he, he's adopted it. He, he, I, think, I think he still has the Sheetrock jersey we made him just to uh, m- memorize the moment. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, he's celebrating his birthday on a cruise down in Grand Turks. Uh, whenever he sees this, man, big happy birthday to you, Kevin. He runs, he's our fleet captain. Right. Uh, so him and Kelsey take care of all of our he's drivers. He's your fleet captain, but you pulled him off the road. He's a driver, right? Former driver. Right Drove on. with Taman, 30-year career. I mean, he's, he's been at half the facilities that we, we, we tender, get tender loads to. It's awesome. He's a good dude. What else is going on there in the world of the River Wolf? We man. got some pictures here and stuff like that. It's we been can... an exciting time. Uh, we've been doing some uh, pickups. Is that that Kansas uh, City place? Or? It is, it is, it yeah. is. And one, that was one of our assets, one of our Taman truck lines drivers that took that picture um we've been doing a lot of stuff with truck lines we just bought a warehouse so we're going to get into uh physical owning owning of 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 space down in savannah we always already do some warehouse services across the country 
Um, oh, this at, is you guys at the Mox Stadium right here. We Philly are, Stadium. And, and we just continued or just extended our partnership. So 2023, we'll be out there again. Um, we love that. Their crew loves that. Uh, our, our main driver, Roger Morris, a.k.a. Cowboy. Cowboy. Loves the, the, the He's a great program. guy. He's he great. is, man. Hey, do you guys do this for other sports for them as well, like women's volleyball and all that kind of stuff? Do you do Just football. Just football. Just football right now. Okay. Um, right now, that's the, 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 the type of equipment that really makes the most sense, the number of people with the, the, not oh, yeah, only yeah, the actual yeah, yeah. physical yeah. part of their their pads but all yeah, the stuff the men's volleyball like team is like like five balls and some soccer team shoes, basketball right? team right, right. Their, their shoes go in a bag they go yeah they're the not plus. taking the goals right, with right. them and stuff like but that but in, interest from other colleges interest from other oh schools. sure uh, so that's been really exciting very cool very cool what was that last one right there uh just uh, a couple of our trucks uh so we we're, we're buying new trucks all the time um especially with with a lot of the costs coming down here recently it's been been a good time to continue growing that asset side of the business uh, and this is our beautiful current campus. Uh, we oh, just bought a new new building. There it is. Uh, so this is our new building. That's downtown right off Main Street behind yep. Feed. Is that right? Right behind Feed. Uh, beautiful location right in the heart of Freight Alley, right next to Southside. Great district of Chattanooga. Beautiful old building. Tons of character. We'll have a rooftop bar. Uh, we'll have a down, downstairs. Oh, is that like going to be a thing now? Because did Steam start that trend now? Rooftop hey, I bar? Think it's did, all, I did think, he steal that from you? I love it. Hey, hey ideas are ideas. It's all about execution, right? There you go. Uh, I think uh, uh, what they're doing and what we're doing, uh, any company that's putting a rooftop, I think I is you. only going to make Chattanooga a skyline I, I think better. you guys should sponsor a zip line right down Main Street. Oh, I sure. like that. Right I street. like that. Right? That's brilliant. God, that's what I do. That's <laughs> what I do. You know who else is brilliant? Joe Monahan is brilliant. He's the CEO and president at Worldwide Logistics, and he's our next guest. Joe, am I pronouncing that right, or is it Monaghan? No, it's, it's Monahan. Yeah, see, you I told you, right. Ryan, you owe me five bucks. We had a bet. We had, we a, had bet. a bet. We had a bet. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, before we get into this, you are our favorite, our very favorite Farley Dickinson University alumni. And I got to ask you this question. Why do you have Devils and Knights? Why are there two mascots at Farley Dickinson? Uh, there's two different campuses. So ah. the main campus is in uh, Teaneck, New Jersey. And that's the one that plays uh, like Division One basketball. Um, I went to a smaller campus in Madison, New Jersey, and we're the Jersey Devils. Oh, Jersey Devils. there you go. The Jersey Devils. All right. Very cool. Very Love cool. The website. the website was awesome. Yeah, the Jersey <laughs> Devil is a real thing. He's just he's just a distant cousin of Bigfoot. I, I agree with that 100%. Exactly. <laughs> So let, let's dig into this. Let's let's dig into this, uh, Joe. What is what is going on in the world? You guys hit everything basically. You guys are experts in in, in everything. I mean, well, you, you're into maritime, you're air freight, you've got land logistics, freight forwarding, you've got warehousing and distribution, all that kind of stuff. You guys are into all kinds of stuff. So let's hit on all the different uh, aspects and see what's going on there from the perspective of worldwide logistics. Let's start off with maritime. We know that rates have been dropping like crazy, coming off of a, a huge high and it's i almost want to go out and book a teu from china to the west coast just because it's so cheap now you know what i'm saying hey honey i don't need it but i saved you know a uh, 90 percent over what it would have cost last year right better than any coupon you've got <laughs> better than any coupon so what's going on in the land of maritime right now joe what are you guys seeing yeah volumes are down uh rates are way down i mean you mentioned the west coast i think uh you know the rates are less than a tenth of what they were uh a year ago um, they're sort of right size to pre-pandemic levels, and uh, it, it's it's uh, just you know back to normal, um, back to what was normal in 2020 and prior to that. Um, there's still a little bit of um, stickiness on the rates downward to the East Coast, and uh, there's also um, some stickiness on the IPI rates to the interior, but overall rates are way down from where they were at the peak um, during the pandemic. Interesting. Interesting. So, Joe, let me ask you this on that as well, just a quick follow-up on the maritime. We talk about the volumes moving from the West Coast to the East Coast, particularly out of the China trade. But uh, the China to North America trade lane is also shrinking as well as we reshore, I guess, or anywhere else shore type of type of thing. Is the East Coast bump in volume making up for that loss of volume on the West Coast? I would think from the total imports, it, it quite isn't. No, no. The total imports are down. Um, you know, and the emphasis on China is is less. You know, there was a time when I first got into that trade, um, like 35, 40 years ago, um, the business was spread out over multiple origins in the Far East, uh, with China being significant, but in no way dominant. And it 
kind of evolved to where most of the volume coming out of the Far East was coming out of China. And starting with the tariffs that were imposed during the Trump administration, people started to source goods in other countries. And people have a mind to continue sourcing in other countries because I think they learned the their hard lesson that being, you know, sort of one dimensional in their sourcing programs was not a healthy thing to do. So now we're seeing significant volumes from places like Vietnam, Cambodia, Mm. Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, which is really more like the model that existed 35 years ago. That's really exciting. Joe, do you see yourself kind of eyeing anything expansion wise for 2023? Um, Anything different with how customers are thinking about their supply chains? Yeah, I mean, all of our growth is driven by our customers. I mean, we use both of our ears and and uh, listen to what our customers' needs are. And we don't do anything on a speculative basis. We don't say, geez, you know, looks like uh, Myanmar would be a good market to be in. We wait to have customers tell us they need us to be there, and then we're there. Um, we've opened up offices just in the last couple of months in Thailand, Malaysia, and philippines um we're looking at other locations around the world we're up to 20 countries now and we fully expect to expand to um as many as 35 countries by the end of next year wow wow that's some good demand that's that's awesome expansion let's talk a little bit about air and its relationship to maritime as well right when you look at ltl and truckload you know you can tell what's going on with one from the reaction of the other, right? When when truckload gets really high, you start to see, uh, or when the capacity starts to get really tight, you start to see it blade over in volume shipments and spot volume contracts, that type of stuff in LTL, right? Yep. And then when truckload starts to die, you also see an uptick for a while in LTL until it starts to die. Air cargo, we've seen maritime like Maersk and so on and so forth jumping into a- and, uh, uh, air cargo and this expansion of freight uh, capacity uh, are we seeing that still there? Is that pressure for air cargo still there? Or as we see the maritime drop, is that air starting to drop as well? Yeah, it's not dropping as precipitously as the ocean freight has, but it's definitely come down a bit. I mean, during the pandemic, of course, there was a a, a lot of uh, reduction in passenger flights. And of course, a lot of freight moves in the belly of passenger aircraft. So the overall impact on capacity was pretty profound. But as passenger travel is increasing again, um, things are sort of getting right-sized. Gotcha, gotcha. What about in the warehouse and distribution? Do you think we're setting ourselves up for another bullwhip action as we, uh, you know, we saw shippers, uh, you know, the imports are down, right? So you see the BCOs ordering less and bringing in and trying to get rid of old inventory. Is this a ripple effect that comes back to bite them? We see a surge of uh, maybe inventory uh, replenishing next year, or are we in it for the long haul in that area as well? Well, I'd love I'd love to see a surge of inventory replenishing next year. Um, You know, um, we operate about a million square feet in six locations in the U.S. and another um, close to half a million square feet in three locations in Europe. And uh, right now, um, the warehouses continue to be full. You know, occupancy in the U.S. is at like 98 percent or something like that, um, particularly acute. lack of space on the East Coast. But I think the difference that we're seeing now is where a lot of that was driven by the movement towards e-commerce away from big box retail. Now, a lot of that capacity is being absorbed just by excess inventories. Yeah, yeah. Well, how about um, south of the border? Um, permits not being issued? Um, how are you guys thinking about and look, looking about looking at kind of your business um, cross-border, either into Mexico or from Mexico to the U.S.? Yeah, our our Mexico business is growing like crazy. Um, We opened an office in Mexico City about uh, 15 months ago. And uh, the biggest challenge we have is keeping the the office staffed up enough to handle the volume of work that we're handling. Yeah. But um, our work isn't as much cross border. Most of our work is um, third country stuff, um, automotive stuff that's coming into Mexico by air that we're providing customs clearance and delivery on um, as well as uh, manufactured goods that are coming in from Germany, from Spain, from the far East um, that we provide um, transportation customs clearance and delivery on. 
Gotcha. So the 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 permits, what uh, Ryan was referring to, there was the you know they they had the hack there or the uh, ransomware. I guess it wasn't ransomware, but they hacked into the computer systems there, and the Mexican authorities they're not uh, issuing new permits, et cetera, for cross border. I guess that's not impacting you guys uh, quite a bit as you don't do much of that that move, right? That's right. Gotcha. So we, we, you talked about some of the expansion over there in, in Southeast Asia from the reshoring or change in shoring. How much of that is actually moving into Mexico? And will that take away from business that is coming across in, in air or in, uh, in maritime? Are you looking towards that in the future? Is that a real threat to that trans-Pacific uh, uh, move of freight, whether it be maritime or air? Oh, not at all. I think it's just, you know, Mexican consumption is what we're seeing is, oh, okay. is spiking. And we're, we're seeing lots of, lots of finished goods that are moving in there for our furniture uh, manufacturing customers, uh, garment manufacturing customers, um, just a whole range of products that are moving in there, both component goods for further manufacture as well as finished goods. Mm-hmm. So you guys, uh, obviously, you, I don't know if you saw the, the beginning of the show, read the article on the survey of where spot rates are going, but uh, what's your thought on where those are and where rates are, truckload rates are, as far as spot rates and contract rates are both softening and they continue to do that. Contract really just starting to be pulled down, and we've, I'm sure we expected that and knew it was going to be a delay. Uh, majority of people think it's going to last through Q2 in 2023. What are you thinking? Yeah, I'd agree with that. I don't think it's bottomed out yet. Um, you know, I'd like to think it had bottomed out. That would be great. But unfortunately, I think there's still some movement downward that we could expect. Um, I think that, um, I mean, I'm optimistic for the second half of 2023. Um, but I think we have a little bit of a rough road to hope between now and then. Yeah, I think I think you're right. So, um, Joe, what do you guys, uh, what's what's new at Worldwide Logistics? What are you guys uh, looking forward to in 2023? And how are you going to end 2022? Um, 2022 has been a banner year. Um, 2023 promises to be a little bit more challenging, but we're very optimistic about it. Um, we're um, continue to expand, expand our global footprint. We're very excited about the three offices that we opened in Africa in 2022. Um, we're getting involved in a lot of project work there, infrastructure project work. Um, those officers are in uh, Accra, Ghana, in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, and in Cairo, Egypt. Um, we're expanding across the globe and uh, very, very bullish on the future of our company. Excellent stuff. Thank you so much, Joy. We'll catch up with you uh, a little bit uh, later in the year, hopefully. And you have a wonderful rest of your day, my friend. Thank you so much for being on. Hey, thanks for your time. I enjoyed it. Excellent. Thank you so much. Hey, meanwhile. What is that? That's a beautiful sight right there. Did you guys see that? Look at this. What's that say on the side there? Does that say Taman? That says Taman. Was that at was that at F three? No, it wasn't at F three. It was in Stuttgart. It was in Germany. What's up with uh, that, my friend? We're going to have to get that at F four. I saw no blimps at F three. I don't understand what's going on. And I've been talking about the necessity for blimps, especially in the drone space. (laughs) Our CEO and our president uh, were actually inside that, driving it around. Oh, is that right? (laughs) Inside of it. (laughs) So you're going to dock that thing at the top of your new building over there on South Main? Precisely. (laughs) Precisely. No, we were at a big auto uh, auto show in Germany, and uh, that was one of the options for marketing. Uh, Somehow, no one else was was using it. Uh, so I think we were the only blimp in the whole thing, and you, you better believe that, that that stood out. That got a lot of good attention. I want to see that at uh, uh, either in Cleveland next year, June. I could see it. With I could us. see it dropping hot dogs. Like or next. Like, that's what I'm saying, right? Cleveland, Cleveland ballpark hot dog. Yeah, with, with the stadium mustard. Stadium on mustard. It. Let's do it. Yeah, man. All right, that's good. I love it. That's what we're gonna do. Look forward to that, people. And you can sponsor that for the low, low price. No. I'm just <laughs> uh, let's welcome our next guest, a good friend of mine and a good friend of Ryan's as well, Jeff D'Angelo. Hello. He's got some new news that he just uh, announced just the other day came through there. Jeff, hey, thanks hey. for being on the show, my friend. Hey, guys. How are hey, you? Hey. There he is. He's Good. just... You know, what's, he, you know what you don't see? By the way, you, you know what you don't see on camera no. is the fact that Pamplin is a whole foot and a half taller than <laughs> Vincent. Oh, yeah. Easily. Like, yeah. <laughs> Are you are you sitting on um, a phone book? Is that what you're doing? I've got a milk I've got a milk crate under my chair, and uh, (laughs) Ryan is Ryan's actually kneeling. I don't know if you uh, 
He's actually kneeling behind the uh, <laughs> desk over here. <laughs> Did you know that Ryan also does radio commercials because he has like the deepest voice. He's like the James Earl Jones of the freight world. I've got a whole TikTok channel. I don't. I don't even make money in freight. It's all, it's, it's all TikTok. It's all, it's all TikTok. <laughs> so hey, you got a new uh, venture that's coming out here. Maybe he can be the uh, voice of uh, Fura, right? What's going on, my friend? Yeah, Tell us all about uh, it. Yeah. Uh, it sounds intimidating. That's awesome. Like it. <laughs> um, yeah, I just announced. Was it Monday or uh, I yeah. just announced Monday? Yeah. Um, really cool. Uh, super interesting um, concept in our industry. Uh, it, about close to a year, probably nine months ago, I was introduced to uh, the CEO and founder by um, an ex Turbo uh, employee of ours. And basically, they came to me and said, "Hey, we're we're looking to build this sort of digital logistics business in a different way in the United States. Can you help us?" And so, you know, I was a couple years obviously removed from um, from Turbo and. Um, you know, the idea and the concept was amazing. And, and so as we started to sort of work together um, uh, on planning and strategy and like, how do we get a market? A lot of the things that sort of they believed, I believed, um, you know, wholeheartedly. So, uh, and, and Ryan, you know, Ryan knows this for me because, um, you know, Tayman was one of the first customers that we had on Turbo in that, you know, this whole team believes that, you know, logistics is still broken, right? It's broken across the board and it's broken because there's still too much manual work, right? You've got all these people working together and they don't have common tool sets. Um, but when you sort of dive down into the mid market of shippers, they don't have options. They literally don't have a, a lot of good options, uh, meaning um, a lot of times they don't have budgets for technology, right? And you, you've seen some companies like Emerge come and say, hey, I how do we help those companies with with sort of RFP tools? But um, from a digital managed service approach, they 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 don't have those options. Like Ryder and and Penske and those big guys are are going to have a tough time going downstream to the small and mid sized shippers. Um, and then also you see in this market, like people uh, companies laying off people, like thousands of people. Yeah. Look at the C H Robinson thing, and we talked about that. Yeah, that's and, certain. And, and, and Amazon like, is Amazon just uh, announced ten thousand. We're not sure what departments those are, but there's ten thousand out of Amazon, which isn't a great sign either, right? Yeah, and when I think of that, like I, I think of like I, number one, it, it saddens me that people lose their jobs. Like, absolutely hate that. But I also think of like number one, did they overhire? Mm. Right. Number two, how high, wide, and deep are they with their customers? Is it you know all transactional? And, you know, how are they sort of integrating their, ex call it experience into their customers and their carriers sort of differently? And I feel like um, our industry does not do a good job of that. And okay, so as we so, started talking about Fura. So how does Fura do that? How does Fura pick this stuff? Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. So let me finish on Fura. So there's, there's this whole sort of, we'll call it digital logistics play. Yeah. But we also feel that... Um, there's a lot of companies, a lot of logistics companies that are not going to make it over the next couple of years, right? In the next, we'll call it three to five years, whether mm -hmm. they're too old school, they're too manual, the cost per transaction is too high. Maybe they're not forward enough thinking about, you know, how do I change the business model or how do I, um, you know, maybe not hire as many, you know, many people and have that big spend, right? And so um, we're doing a, a, a roll-up, a, a strategic roll-up where, we're buying up, you know, traditional logistics companies, rolling them into our platform. And when I say roll up, I mean into our platform. I mean people, process, and technology. And so, if you look at the team that we have, um, so the team comes from Amazon. Like, think of senior execs at Amazon that know mm -hmm. how to execute. Comes from Google and Uber and Eny and a, a company called Honor, which is um, has a, a big. Uh, roll up play, right? So they we understand uh, M and A, <clears throat> and as we roll that in, it's all about automation. It's all about value add to the customer, um, and then it's it's all about transformation of business model. So we can solve the problems that we talked about, which are you know too much manual work. You know we're we're giving technology to to companies that don't have it, and it's really about digitizing their ecosystem. So um, when I talk about that digitizing ecosystem. You know, all these companies are still doing, hey, wh not only where's my truck, right? But they're also, yeah. they're doing it because their customers are asking that. 
right? Their customers are saying, where's my stuff? So how do we solve their people problem, right? How do we solve their lack of automation problem? Not just, you know, go book this shipment. And I think a lot of like sort of the, the industry is still that way because, you know, brokerage companies are built from other brokerage companies. They're like, hey, I just want to go build the same thing I built before versus, yeah. hey, how do we reimagine this from the ground up? Well, I, I love that because, you know, so many people, they just say, hey, we're digital, and then they don't explain exactly what we're doing. So that that is a, a great explanation. One of the things that you said there, which is different and differentiates you, and you and I talked about this the other day, is is really acquiring those 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 traditional brokers and rolling them up into it, right? And we talked about this, and even Ryan and I talked about this before. I, I, a lot of brokers missed the bubble a year and a half ago, right? <laughs> is now the time, I mean, right. it's a down market and you're buying up brokers. Is now the time to do that? Or is it because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a fair enough question, right? ODFL started during the Great Recession, right? Or the Great Depression, actually, <laughs> and, and kicked ass. We're in a freight recession and you're opening up and acquiring brokers. Uh, did they miss the bubble and, and you're getting some great deals or what's going on? Yeah, I, it's so funny. When when valuations were what they were a year ago, I would look at the team and I'm like, they're really not worth that much. <laughs> There's, yeah. you know, because the the not only was the EBITDA, but you look at when people say, "Hey, we're tech," like they're really not tech. They're hiring more people. They're not trying to automate, you know, some of the sort of low level work or automate the transaction end to end or provide. Think of ARR. There's no concept in logistics called ARR and your recurring revenue. So you can't really call it a tech play. And yeah. so um, when we, you know, when we started looking at this, we knew, you know, everybody's saying, Hey, in the year or two years, there's going to be, to your point, there's gonna be a bubble. And right now is for us, we're really excited because freight is still a relationship game. I'm not going to say it's not like it is a relationship game. So sure. for us, it's all about how do we help those companies with great relationships actually transform that relationship from a transactional one to a digital one and then from digital to ARR, which is very different than sort of what um, what traditional guys do because you talked about I was listening to uh, worldwide logistics and I was I heard you guys talk about spot rates. Well to me like there's a spot market because I think shippers treat 3PLs or brokers or you know even trucking companies as a means to an end, right? That you know, hey, mm-hmm. we've got this order versus how do we understand from a digital perspective, like when that order is actually planned to hit that becomes a shipment, and how do I create de- demand signals three and four weeks in advance? And so, as you think about that, like I can literally automate most of that those roles through technology, right? You can, but you can't automate that relationship. And so, I think there's a beautiful marriage sort of between the two. And when you're talking about M&A, um, you know, our goal is to find the ones that have sort of the best relationships and you leverage those as a way to grow the business and grow our platform. So brand-wise, organization-wise, brokerage gets acquired, their customer base, their carrier base sees the brand, feels the brand, same thing, the resources are just through you or, do you, or is Fura going to go and position a, 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 a chunk of business to a carrier on your behalf of the companies and, and kind of, are they all going to be, uh, you know, a Fura company type, type, type thing where there's branding for y'all still on it? It's, it's, a, it's an awesome question. And we get this all the time from, from owners that are like, are you going to, you know, are you going to hurt my brand that I've built? Right. Are you going to hurt? Um, at the end of the day, like when you buy and roll up companies, you have to optimize the networks, right? You like you're using those companies as a way to bring together data, to bring together shipper and carrier networks, right? And you have to optimize them in some way. And we don't do we don't do those things right away, Ryan. Like we're not we're not ripping those out. Our job is to earn trust the first call it six to twelve months with the companies that we buy, and then find ways to invest in those companies differently to create more and more automation and earn trust. Over time, they will become, call it the fear of mothership. They will be a part of that mothership. And so if I'm a, you know, if I'm an owner of a company that either doesn't have the know-how or doesn't have the resources or doesn't have the technical 
so a sort of understanding on how to build a technology company because they're two different things, right? Building a logistics brokerage and building a technology company are very two different sort of muscles that you have to learn and flex. Mm. And and a lot of those guys that are logistics companies saying we're going to build our own tech are actually not technology companies. So um, they're they're brokerages and it's they they have a difficult time. Well, they're facts, and so we kind of mer- so they're digital. <laughs> they're digital <laughs> but, but to your point right. ryan like we're going to help them you like we're going to help them and their people get to a next level of operating mm. right so that they can not only survive as an organization but actually thrive and actually be a part of something really really cool you know when they sell their you know sell their business to us or you know like in some in some cases like potentially have have equity in the new mothership so it just depends on on the business um, but for us, it's again, like it, you, we, you can't go into this, like a PE like e- firm. You're like, Hey, I'm just going to rip out costs and do all those things. It doesn't yeah. work that way in our industry. It just doesn't because the relationships are so important. It's awesome stuff, Jeff. So, cool. uh, where do people go to learn more, my friend? Uh, www.fura.com. F U R A dot C O M Fura dot com. Excellent from? stuff, man. I've got a, a where, where Fura, where was Fura? Oh, where'd the name come from? It's a great, que- it's a great question. You know what, Ryan and Michael, like if you guys want to invite me to another session, we'll do that. Then we'll then start with that. Okay. All right. cool. Sounds there good. Go. That's cool. All right. All right, man. I, I love it. Hey, Jeff, take care, man. We'll talk soon. I'll call you later today or tomorrow or something like that. And, and uh, you got thank it. You. I'm about to All right, brother. right now. Be well, brother. Pamphlin. <laughs> just pamplin hey you know what xpo is driven to put your freight first with coverage in 99 percent of u.s zip codes as well as key routes in mexico and canada xpo will help you get your shipments where they need to go on time and damage free that's the name of the game right on time Always. and damage free all fine-tuned by over 35 years of world-class ltl experience to learn more where do they go there ryan ltl-solutions.xpo.com. Wow, you made that look easy, dude. Man, let's go. I mean, you're that's like XPO. my one job on this show, and you just crushed it. I'll send you some show notes later. <laughs> I love it. Hey, let's welcome <laughs> Rooster and Super Trucker. It's Rooster. Rooster. Hey. I love that. Hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Look at that, man. I've got the power. Yeah, it's, it's, it, listen it. to this. Listen to this. It's Rooster. <laughs> Dude, this is awesome. You I guys got the ones outside to do it if you needed to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you got yeah, real yeah. ones out there? <laughs> yeah, man, you got yard birds. Come on. <laughs> you got yard birds. Go, I love bro. it. A great band, by the way, the yard birds. I love the, the yard birds. You like the yard birds? I like the tune yards. That's me, though. Oh, okay. There tune you go. Yards. Excellent good, stuff. Good, good hey, you guys like Christmas? How does it feel being... How's, ah. it feel, how's it feel being on the opposite side of the set? There? It's I being on on this side, but the power, <laughs> I've got to tell you, I'm drunk with power. <laughs> I've hit his head. I've bumped Watch into this. his head four Watch times Watch already. This. It's Rooster. <laughs> See, it's freaking killer, man. I love it. He's been walking around asking for people to open the door and do all types of things just because the sound goes. It's been bad today, guys. I'm going to tell you. Exactly. I am. I am the Fura. Watch out, Dooner. When you get back, it may be a whole different dude. <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, you guys like me. I, I do. You guys like Christmas time. You guys decorate for Christmas mm-hmm. and all kinds of stuff. All right. So, yeah. do you watch like Christmas light fights? The great Christmas light fights. You ever watch that show or anything? Of like course, that? and the baking ones. Come on. I, I love that. Nah. The baking. I love the baking Man, ones too. On. Did you like uh, uh, nail it or fail it or nail it or whatever? <laughs> I didn't see that. Nah, one. That's a good I didn't one. See that one. They take really crappy bakers and make them do crazy stuff. That's it's awesome. Pretty fun. <laughs> pretty fun. I live, hey. I live not far from 13th Street in Philadelphia, and that whole block just goes nuts for our Christmas every year. Okay. They have amazing. Amazing light show. Right. Oh. So there's there's a, been an ongoing war in my neighborhood ever since I moved in seven years ago. Here's my house. This is the night after after Halloween, right? I've already got the lights starting to go. <laughs> I've got the lasers going and all this other kind of stuff, right? And so, like, the next day after that, this is what my neighbor puts out there to start this fight going, right? <laughs> 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 Oh man, that's a good sense of humor right there. Yeah, so that's that's the deal there. You guys go crazy on Christmas or what? Not really. Every, it's like every time we move, you know, it always takes you like a, a year or two to acclimate to the neighborhood and, and get settled down. And we've just yeah. been moving too much lately to do that. I um, got you. Other people in the area are going nuts for Thanksgiving right now. Like Thanksgiving is the new Halloween. 
You just oh, you just really? Sign, you, you guys yeah, dress you up as turkeys like, and pilgrims and stuff, and go door to door and ask for mashed potatoes. Definitely, <laughs> definitely getting their definitely getting their yards in the uh, holiday spirit. He <laughs> couldn't dress up as as Miles Standish and go knock on doors and ask for <laughs> cranberry sauce and stuff. Or? Corn stalks, corn no. stalks, corn, hay bales, hay bales, corn, corn stalks. Just leave them up. Just take take the spider webs off. <laughs> it, 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 so, is it in your consideration, Rooster? Is it too soon to put up? Uh, do you put up uh, Christmas lights and stuff before or after Thanksgiving? Do you have a law there, or do you care? Uh, we don't care. I mean, I, I, dude, I'm in the South. Keep Christmas lights up all the time, man. I mean, all year long. I just yep, yep, yep. use them for security lights, you know, to have around the house to see what's going on. But uh, we don't do it much as we used to. We used to do like lights in the trees, lights on the the hedge bushes, lights around yeah. the house. But you know, we we've toned back a little bit in the last few years. You know, they had those, those big inflatable displays like you just showed now to put out in the yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How about the multicolored trees? We, we've got we've got green trees, white trees, multicolored trees. I've seen a purple tree. Mm. What green green all the way for you? Uh, I, I, I do prefer the green cedar. You know, uh, I, I go to the dollar store and I see those like uh, spray painted white. <laughs> no, that's trees flocking, like, dude. That's flocking. That's not spray paint. It's flocking, dude. It's a, a spray yeah. paint, dude. I used to work at home improvement. I know what <laughs> no, he knows. Rooster knows. <laughs> we, we bought a fart. Let's change the label on the can, ago. boys. That's all you got to do. Change, change the label, label that five dollars. <laughs> hey, hey man, let's move on to right the next here. one here, man. I, you know, I've I've seen cars hit moose and stuff like that. Check this thing out here. This is from a. Obviously, you know this oh, wow. this story all too well, right? Deer are getting out yeah. and getting yeah. after trucks. Is that a deer or is that a brick wall that hit this thing? Check that out, man. You guys ever hit anything like that, rooster? Uh, uh luckily, in my career, I've never hit a deer with a work truck, personal truck. You know, I've hit a couple, unfortunately, but uh, you get deers and moose and tractor trailers is a bad scene especially you got cars moose. behind it or moose around it moose yeah moose are bad buffalo. people don't realize those are a couple buffalo. thousand pounds right moose i've never yeah. hit a buffalo no i don't see them moving fast like a deer i can see jumping out i don't feel like a buffalo yeah. running out of i think way. a buffalo would hit your car instead of you hitting it right isn't that how that works <laughs> Uh, super trucker what's the craziest thing you ever hit with your truck or did you never hit anything with your truck or run over uh, you know, i did hit a deer it was a tiny little you know buck in uh utah and when it hit it like bounced off the hood and impaled itself on a uh, road on a mile marker sign oh wow uh, when I, when I, yeah so perfect. like vlad, like perfect vlad the impaler you're like just in the impaler now <laughs> Yeah, you know, it sucked because we, we, in we the just community got the, now. You're known, yeah. You, yeah. <laughs> we had just gotten the truck like a couple of weeks ago. Our, our company was pissed because they had these like nice, you know, thick chrome bumpers on the front. He paid a lot of money for those. And, How about you, yeah, Ryan? What's the craziest the thing you ever hit? You ever hit a bear in downtown uh, Chattanooga or anything like that? No, I've never seen a bear in my whole life, actually. <laughs> uh, I hit a golf ball once. You hit a golf ball once? <laughs> just once. Uh, I'm proud of it. <laughs> I was driving uh, across the Alligator Alley, or actually 41 south of of alligator alley okay. the, the road south of alligator yeah, yeah. alley people really don't realize that that's actually there right <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've ever driven it before but uh -oh. it goes through like everglade city and stuff like that you know what i'm talking about justin you know the road it's it's south it's tamayami yeah. trail but it's south of it's the one that's not the highway cruising across that thing doing a, a very very high rate of speed and saw one of those heat you know like a heat you know you see the heat uh, shadows often you know glimmering mirage, kind of thing. Yep. yeah a little mirage yeah. so I'm, I'm seeing that thing and i'm coming and it's getting more and more solid I'm thinking, oh, it's just a, it's a palm frond, right? And no, it was about a 12 foot alligator. I took that thing, I just, boom, right over top of this thing. It's rolling and rolling. And the person next to me is like, you got to stop. And I'm like, for what? For what? <laughs> going to help it? <laughs> what, am I going to help it? If it's not dead, it's really it's pissed helping. off. Yeah, I'm not going back there and helping that thing. <laughs> there is no way I'm doing that. He's going to know you're from Tennessee, too, and it's going to try to get, get an extra bite out. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Ooh, he's, maybe he's smoked with someone at Hickory Wood. I'm going to take care of this guy right here. <laughs> Unbelievable. But, hey, check this guy out here as well. This is from another one here with the, the truck driver. And we'll get to the story a little bit, but this is... It's crazy. Check this out. Mm -hmm. Man in a do-rag, smoking something, confidently gripping the outside of a semi-truck <laughs> as it rolls down the highway. I, I love that the reporter says he's confidently smoking something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you ever see anything like that, Rooster, out there driving problem. around? <laughs> you gotta have some uh, you're doing that. 
I haven't personally seen, but it's it's unfortunately this is starting to be getting into much of a dangerous fad. Uh, that was from Atlanta or, or last year. Yeah. Uh, for a couple days ago, Houston, we had a guy that was climbing over the fence off a bridge, jumped on top of a trailer, started dancing on top of it. I don't know if he was trying to do a video or something, but truck up underneath him starts moving. He falls over, gets back up, and when he gets back up, uh, the truck's already moved up, and the bridge is 13.9. So uh, he didn't quite fit up underneath it. Oh, so he got, like, ground up underneath between the bridge and the top? Uh, of the well, it knocked him off, but he didn't survive it, you oh, know. God. Yeah, and that is, I, I think that's that's one of these uh, social kind of uh, uh, viral uh, things that's going. Yeah. Challenges, uh, stupid stuff. Yep, yep, yep. Bad is news. that what that is? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. This, that, that guy there is crazy enough right there. I mean, I, I don't know if I was if that driver must know him or something like that. I mean, it, it, it's tempting him from just kind of going over and scraping him off like a bug off the windshield, you know, with that other truck and like, inching over or a little at bit. At least just <laughs> slam on your brakes and, you know, get him off your truck. <laughs> yeah. So there's no That's chance easy. it was yeah, team yeah, drivers. They could have been team there's drivers. no chance. Yeah, I, I don't you, know. You, I'm asking you guys. Now, there's no <laughs> chance it was a team driver and he's just really, really, really tired of being in the truck with him and just kind of left on him. I wouldn't happened. say it's a zero sum chance. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, so you're saying there's a chance. So here's Swamp. here's one that's near and dear to uh, to uh, Super Trucker over here. Are you a negative Nancy when you go traveling, Ryan? Are you like one of these people that's like, I'm not stopping. We're going straight through. Or do you no. stop and see the ball of twine and stuff I like take that? My time. You I take chill. your time. You take your time. All right. Right. So check this out. This is from uh, Justin. I, I get paid to travel. You're not traveling. Okay. This you. you you know, when I first was on the road back in 2007, uh, things like Uber and Lyft, that didn't exist back then. But now they're pretty ubiquitous in like any medium to large size city out there. Um, park the truck, catch a 34 hour reset. If you're near a site, call an Uber, you know, go, go be a tourist for a day. It's a lot easier to do that today than it was you know, back when I started. Yeah, and with average detention times, you've got probably a whole day to go catch a ball game and maybe hit up a museum yeah. and something like that, right, Justin? <laughs> yeah, so, but, you know, back when, you know, it's fun that I can say back in my day, um, the mileage was king back then. So you would have these like 1,000, 1,200 mile trips. So during the trip itself, you know, everything's go, go, go. And then, then you get there. Once you're there, it's like, okay, now what do I do with my free time? Um, very rarely would I ever have the opportunity to like, go sightseeing and stuff. But, you know, I did get to see the, the biggest trip, you know, for a day or two when, when I was out there, um, you know, opportunities like that didn't happen to me, you know, living in Florida. Um, but now with Uber and Lyft, you know, you could really, you know, easily catch a 20 minute ride somewhere and, and check out something cool and then get back in the truck and get back to work. It's all about what you make of it. You know, what are your options? You're either going to be languishing in the truck, you know, bemoaning sitting for 34 hours, or you can, you know, go out and do something. Yeah, I, I would imagine that that's got to be um, a really important to your your mental health, both short and long yeah. term, as a Absolutely. driver, right? I mean, depression sets in, cabin fever, yeah. sad is yeah. an actual thing in the Northeast. My father suffered from it for years uh, yeah. because of the, because of the change in you know light or you know the, mm-hmm. the, the daylight savings, et cetera, and the mm-hmm. lack of yeah. Lack a lot of, a lot of the comments on that video were like, well, you know, some people are too depressed to get out of the truck and go out. Well, it's like, it's a chicken or egg problem. You know, you, yeah, you have to you have to get up and get active and get going you know, sometimes to counteract that that seasonal depression. Also, you know, me growing up, I had friends all over the country, you know, because, you know, made friends online and stuff. So I was never more than, you know, 100 or 200 miles away from either friends or family, uh, depending on where I was at in the country. So it was always possible to, you know, catch dinner with someone you haven't seen in a couple of years. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's powerful. Hey, guys, in the back, we're going to skip this next one and move on to this one. This, Oh, yeah, this one. Yeah, no, no, no. Let's go back to go back one. This is uh, this is uh, my man Ryan here at, in his, uh, when he was a fry cook here, and he doesn't understand what he did wrong. Can either of you guys, have you guys done anything? Watch us tell him what he's doing wrong, would you? <clears throat> Ice is cooler than heat. Oh, uh, oh wouldn't that yeah, work? boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how else do you, do you cool down the oil, right? I mean, if it's on. too hot, a fan's not going to work. <laughs> Turn it off and walk away. <laughs> That's a great start of grease fire right there. <laughs> it is. Or, or, so, yeah. or have a nice, have a nice burn. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, it's the season for that type of stuff, right? Because you got people that are going to be throwing like half frozen turkeys into deep fryers, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm going to a big holiday yeah. party. A friend of mine, twentieth annual party uh, next Saturday, and he'll he deep fries probably nine turkeys through this. So they they know exactly what they're doing. They they've had years to practice this. Wait, wait. He's fried nine turkeys over the course of his doing this, or one day he's going to fry nine all at the same time. This weekend he'll be, he'll be frying nine throughout the course of the day. Um, he typically he typically does between five and seven turkeys oh, for these yeah. parties what a hero yeah yeah no yeah. i know people who fry their they fry their turkeys and people and he'll like uh, since he's got all the oil and stuff that together yep. you can yep. bring your turkey and fry and he'll fry it and do that kind of stuff yep. check out this guy you guys ever work as a lumberjack this guy's got a hell of a technique check this guy out oh man Ninji. Oh. Ninji <laughs> <cake. I don't, laughs> that maker. don't work <laughs> that's a good term for that yeah little maker for sure and and here's yeah, the thing. That. Check out his check out his check out his jacket. This guy's just like out of control all over the place. He's in the middle of a bunch of paper birches with this jacket on during hunting season. That's the thing. The tree was looking for a mate. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about a high visibility vest. That's not it. <laughs> <laughs> The, the tree, the tree being so easily kicked over, is probably what saved his life. If that was a more solid tree, you know, he'd, he's a yeah, skull yeah. fracture. This is true. Well, rooster, you just put your head down and run into it right with the top of your head, correct? <laughs> <laughs> it works sometimes, but usually I got the hard hat on when I do it. I've seen Super Trucker do it. He just headbutts it standing to pow yeah. and take that thing down. For <laughs> Guys, thanks for being on the show. I'm Mike Vincent. He's Ryan Pamplin. Thank you for being here, my brother. Hey, stay tuned for more stuff on Freightways. But hey, Dooner's back on Friday. We'll see you then. Download, download the Freightways TV app and catch us on there. You can also see us uh, you know, on, Twi- on uh, Spotify. We're on Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to the What's the Truck News. Newsletter, you get do all it. the information. Check these guys out. Do it now. As well, they're writing that stuff. Do it. Just do it. Peace and love.